Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. So much to talk about today. Uh, my name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya. Jerry, we've got uh, on the table, we've got a monster mash of stuff. Hopefully Ooh. that's the last Halloween uh, uh, thing that I talk about. Uh, maybe not. Nope. Um, inflation, stagflation. Crack up boom. What is that? We're also going to talk about Bitcoin and gold coming together at last. If it's possible, we'll discuss it. Mm -hmm. An idea we're going to bring to the table there. Um, I had, um, we'll also talk about the supplies, physical gold, physical silver, why premiums are so high, you know, just from an industry standpoint, what we're seeing, all of that type of thing. So get an update there. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's start with uh, the supply issues. Um, and then you've got some stuff to bring to the table as well. You've got a few articles that we can, um, uh, you know, dive off of. So I was late getting into work <laughs> this morning. Uh, we're recording on a Friday. I was dropping some product off to a client who is in the shipping business. So okay. I said, wait, wait, hold on. Well, I got to, what is going on? Tell me your take. Because um, remember, actually a couple of weeks ago, I said, this seems to be on purpose, right? Um, and then there was an article out by um, by someone in the gold industry talking about exactly that. It was an article that was going around. Maybe we'll get into that article and bring it up a, a little later. Um, but so, you know, when you hear these type of articles, you're always a little critical of where, w what the perspective is and what it and what it means. And because a lot of the times in corporate media, things just seem to happen for no reason. Sure. Right? Inflation is a surprise to everybody. It must be because we're reopening and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's transitory. Well, it turns out it's not. And mm -hmm. that's another thing that we talked about weeks and weeks ago yeah probably months ago saying this is not transitory and now they're finally mm -hmm. coming to our side of the mm -hmm. our side of the boat saying yeah. it's it's not transitory no that argument was just transitory that, <laughs> right that's what it was um so let's let i, I want to tell you about the conversation Please i do. had so i, I want to so i just said is is it real? Is it fake? What is actually happening? And um, it's crazy business. And this it's, is global shipping. This is global shipping. It's crazy, crazy business. So um, I'll try to pull out the, the best parts. One of the things that, um, that we talked about was that um, tough time hiring people back. Mm -hmm. People are not coming back to work. Mm -hmm. um, they they left when COVID lockdowns and things weren't coming in anyway. So, and can't get them back. Yeah. Now, uh, let's use that as point number one. Do you think that's because they're sitting at home getting money from the government? Why bother going back? Were these places that toxic? W w what could possibly be the reason that they don't want to come back to work? Right? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, when you disincentivize someone from going into work, giving them a check, uh, they deposit that check and become everyone becomes a crypto trader at home and start trading and day trading. That's right. And and speaking to Paul today, he was mentioning that um, you know his his friend who is in uh, uh, bankruptcy uh, accounting is is seeing like no business because Interesting. everyone is getting payments. Yeah. Or or their landlords are helping them with the rent or you know there's all these different things trying to back up the inevitable. Remember, we can we're avoiding reality, but can't avoid the consequences of avoiding reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that seems to be something on on the table. So can't get the labor. The second thing that was being mentioned is that, you know, trying to truck these things. Apparently, you need a particular chassis to get these uh, crates or these big units onto these trucks, and um, they're trying to get them all over the place. So uh, we were talking about this. You know, food, perishable, sitting in a warehouse, just going bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> waiting for a chassis that's out in Saskatchewan or something. And by the time, so Saskatchewan says, okay, we'll, we'll bring those over. We'll get those to you. And by the time they get to, to them here in Toronto to go out to Montreal, they, they've already procured a few chassis to get this thing on the go. So the, the, the companies, the trucking companies are chasing their tail. Right. Sitting on two, three chassis while the, while the shipment has already left. So what do they do with these chassis? They're stuck. So so now they got to get them back out west, <laughs> what right? A mess. So that that's another thing of just logistic organizing, trying to catch up, and they can't without people and without a workforce. How what, are you? Gonna, it's even exacerbated issue. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, then um, oh, and the rates going higher. I, um, she was telling me about um, literally paying extra. Okay, 
So we know the crates have gone up in, in uh, containers, right. I should yeah. say. You know, you could get them for three, 4000 Now it's like 30000 If you're lucky, you can get one for twenty five. Mm-hmm. But you have to pay extra to the, to the people yeah, yeah. to, to get money. into a line, right, to try to guarantee if your stuff can come in. <laughs> so you're now having to, to palm. Going through the back door. You're now having to palm people, and it's no guarantee. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and the she, one you're she desperate. Used the you're example of a of a nightclub, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's I, what I, I got it. Yeah. So okay, so that's another aspect. Uh, just the pricing alone going higher and higher, and then there's getting those containers back to let's say just China as an example, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if they're producing everything, let's say they have a widget that they have to produce, um, they need the different parts for the widget. Yeah. So they don't want to pay for one part of the widget and only get delivery of one part. Because you're gonna be sitting there, I'll use my fridge example, everyone knows my fridge (laughs) example by now. So, okay, you've got the doors, but the internal bolts you don't have, so why take delivery of the doors and pay for the doors if you don't know when you're gonna get the bolts? Mm -hmm. Common sense, yeah. Common sense. So so that's the other side, on on getting the containers back. What a mess. So I asked, the important question is, you know, are, are we going to run out of food <laughs> or are we going to stop? Like, what's going to happen? Right. Mm-hmm, there's, mm-hmm. there's containers with tons of, there's like, you know, how many containers with couches on it? Yeah. Not coming, coming over. Right. Yeah. Um, and speaking of which that, that reminded me of an interview I heard on wall street silver with, e- with our favorite Egon right. von Greyer, our yeah. best buddy, absolutely our best buddy. And he <laughs> was saying that he worked in, uh, I guess when he was a younger man, he worked in England and uh, they only had electricity three times a week, three days a week. And he was selling TVs <laughs> by candlelight. Oh, okay. And they had to just assume that it would turn on <laughs> when they got it home. Um, you know, and I guess that was in the 70s. And, and wow, how history rhymes. How, yeah. So this is a, a mess. She, she did say that, uh, in, in her opinion, that there wasn't really a, a worry about not receiving goods because it's obviously just mucked up, like muddied up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in 2008, when that happened to the financial system, when we needed to grease the wheels of the financial system, they just printed money. Yep. In this case, they don't seem to be able to do that. And then we, I asked about the military. She said, I, I don't know, because they're being diverted to hospitals. I see. Right? To take care of, because to, to take the place mm-hmm. of the people who went from heroes to zeros. Mm-hmm. So, had you know, because I said at some point the military's got to take in, got to step right. up, right? Yeah. I, what I, I would assume. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would assume at some point it becomes a case of national security. So, uh, the impression was that no, we might, we probably won't run out of stuff. Although someone else that she knows was saying go buy a wood burning mm-hmm. stove or something. So I guess the idea is be prepared, yeah, as much as you can. Uh, but but the, the the one important takeaway was expect things to get a whole lot more expensive. Well, we're seeing it. We're seeing different trends around the world, whether it be shortages. And what's with the pictures of cardboard food in, in the grocery stores? Like they have a cardboard printout on, yeah. on, on the shelves. I mean, you're seeing that. The blackout issue is the, is the one in my is the one in the back of my mind. I, I have to say, in terms of my personal preparedness, and we all remember the, the three four day blackout in in Toronto. Um, you Are know, you back kidding? In I remember the I remember the ice storm and the, the big storm. blackout in two thousand one. I think. It was. And you know, some forecasters are saying that this winter could be a very bad one. Um, knock on wood that it won't be. But you know, we're we're talking about power and you know, getting a backup. So this is again. As far as preparedness goes, um, power is very important, obviously. Food is very important. And wealth preservation is of utmost importance And how can you access the wealth and your money when you need it most. Um, having some cash at home and having um, you know, some of your, your, your wealth, your nest egg protected against um, you know, banking issues, blackouts, um, diversifying away from those risky events tailwind risks and uh, you know black swan events these are on our doorsteps whether we like to talk about it we don't talk about it enough but you and I Jeremy we face it every day clients coming coming in and presenting ideas and we have to you know we have to discuss I mean clients are bringing these rea- negative realities that they're not getting answers from from their friends and colleagues 
Oh, this was a crazy conversation. This is why I was so late for work. Um, you were. <laughs> you know, she, 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 she was talking about, um, you know, that uh, yogurt apparently is a very volatile, uh, uh, what's the word, um, uh, fragile food okay. item, okay? Um, and she was talking about the, the rollout of, of the Pfizer and the Moderna and saying how, remember, there was the zero, like how cold it had to be? Yeah. No one cares about that anymore. Anymore, mm -hmm. no one cares. I get, maybe it's changed. I don't know. Maybe it's emergency use authorization. But how many hands it has to go through, right? And you just got like someone working minimum wage at Shoppers Drug Mart accepting it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and all the other things. No one seems to. It it seems to be completely off center page mm -hmm. of the distribution of and logistics of these things. That's right. right. That's right. Anyway, that's kind of just that's an right. aside. But I, I thought it was interesting to think about that because it's it's not a story that's going to go away anytime soon. Because you need to wait for people to be incentivized to actually go back to work and get this thing moving again. So we're we're in a lot of traffic right now mm -hmm. um, with regard to that. Now, how does that affect the gold and silver market? Um, we'll talk about that in the next segment. In the meantime, if you're looking for ways to preserve your wealth, protect your wealth, give us a call, Guildhall Wealth Management. It's one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. And very quickly, winner. Winner. So as many of our listeners know, this last month we were um, collecting orders. So any order placed through the Guildhall Precious Metal site, we were um, jotting down the order numbers and we are here. The last day of, of recording, last day of October, and we're pulling an order number, Jeremy. The winner will be receiving five one-ounce silver maples. Those are hard to get. Hard to get. But they're very beautiful. They're ready to go. And we want the person... Uh, with order number 86932, 86932 to get in touch. And we have some silver maples for you to pick up. Congratulations. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. In the last segment, we were just talking about all the shipping and a wonderful conversation I had with someone who is, who's in that business. So it was great to get some um, anecdotal uh, information about what's happening and that it doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon. And what was interesting about the whole thing, Jerry, is you start to think about the backup of stuff. So you get to a point where you say, okay, well, if there's a bunch of couches in a container and they're not getting it onto shore and getting it out to the stores, the stores are going to run out of stuff, right? Eventually. There's going to be less and less things to sell. And, um, you know, people are going to probably be hip to the idea of, well, I don't know if I want to buy something that I don't really know when it could get delivered either. That's right. True. So mm -hmm. that you're looking at additional slowdown, right? Of, of the economy because of this, uh, because of this jamming up of the shipping issues and the logistics of all of that. Mm -hmm. So again, if you can't get your inventory, what are you going to sell? Uh, so yeah. that's that's going to be again another trickle down effect potentially, mm -hmm. or it also means, hey, this is what I have. Right? Imagine Christmas time. I don't know. You go to your 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 electronics store. You go, I want to buy a TV. They say, mm -hmm. this is the only one I have. Yeah. If you want it, this is the price. No negotiation. Because I got twenty other people who want the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Prices start rising, 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 yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's just again another trickle potential. I'm just giving one example. You could come up with a hundred different examples in, on your own. Use your creativity of mm -hmm. how this could affect things, right? Yeah. Certainly, food is only going to get more expensive as a result because it made its way actually to the store. Mm -hmm. How do you protect against this type of inflation, Jerry? Well, as many of our listeners know, gold and silver have historically performed during times of inflation and hyperinflation, and they perform very well during times that we're seeing today is stagflation. So protecting wealth is uh, of utmost importance. What is stagflation? Well, stagflation is when we have the rate of inflation higher than the the rate of growth in a, in a nation. So we are experiencing that right now. As a result, we're seeing also negative real rates. And this is when gold will perform. When? Um, we need that catalyst. It seems as though gold is lacking a catalyst, but there are many catalysts at play. Which one will it be? There's many to discuss, Jeremy. I mean, the list goes on. Oh, and, and, and we can get into it. And again, think about this, for instance. If you have gotten into the real estate market, okay, and you maxed everything possible to get this piece of real estate because you just, it, it was going up, 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 
And now the government has come out of Canada and saying, we're going to raise rates. Yeah. No joke. We're raising rates. Yeah. Right. To quote Biden. No joke. This isn't yeah. a joke. We're raising rates. Yeah. Um, they're saying it's going to happen. You know, all of a sudden this week they stopped, they stopped uh, quantitative easing in Canada. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a backdoor. I haven't looked into it yet, but I don't know if there's a backdoor. Well, we're, we're cutting this off, but we're still going to do this or we're going to do this instead. Right. Yeah. Um, because that's often how it works. But as you look at it now, the stat stone cold, that's it. Stop buying the bonds. Um, but if the government starts raising rates and you're in the midst of a stagflation era and, and prices of everything is going up, what are you supposed to do? Like what happens if you're, if you're what we call like the, you're not like what it, what your expenses are for the month mm -hmm. go from 5,000 to 8,000, like almost overnight. Yeah. Well, what, what happens? Like well, what, and, and something's going to give yeah and and you're you're gonna you're gonna end up replacing the the bmw in the driveway With? right for a toyota and then and then that's it the, the for sale sign goes up that's right right that's the nut i mean the household the household debt is i mean we are totally to the tilt as far as uh, debt goes household debt is crazy jeremy what are your thoughts on the household debt well i think that um i think that this is where you enter gold yeah. Right. And, and to your point, let's talk about the reasons why gold hasn't gone up. But first, let's talk about why it would be so important. Now, these are just our opinions. We're not advisors. Seek, seek the, you know, your, the opinions of others, um, and the professionals that you trust. But, uh, you know, we've been in the gold business for 15, 15 plus years. Gold has been in business since, since 2002. And look, gold has averaged 11% a year. Last year it was up well over that. The year before that it was up well over that. We could look at silver. It's even performed even better at, at, at times over the last 20 years. And gold's had literally in the last 15 years one down year which was 2013 in Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. And and really that was the bottom at that point in Canadian dollars. It's only been going up since then. Right. Right? Um so if you're using gold as a hedge that's that's beating inflation year over year, then if you have the means, that is an insurance policy against rising rates because gold is going to go through the roof in my opinion. Yeah. Now I don't know when we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the potential in just a few moments. But when gold goes through the roof and the purchasing power of gold increases fivefold, tenfold, whatever it is, and you're not taking risk because it's real money, mm -hmm. there's a finite amount of gold. That's right. Then you have hedged yourself against the decline or the expense of other things rising. And really, the part of the expense of things rising, besides logistics, some professionals corporate professionals will have you think that is that this is all just because of logistics and, and shipping when it's not. It's also coupled with the fact that the government has been printing tens of billions and hundreds yeah. of billions of dollars and forced these laborers to stay at home mm -hmm. and take a take a free ride. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a demolishing of the economy like this. It's yeah. just it's, you know, where where's the like, where's the rationality of all mm -hmm. of this? But holding physical gold is a way to hedge it. That's right. And gold is so cheap right now compared. People think it's, uh, uh, let me ask you, let me put it to you. People say gold is expensive. What do you say to that? Compared to what? Um, well, we have to look at purchasing power. Uh, we look at in the rate of inflation, but more so we have to look at, uh, I pull up charts. If you want to get technical with me with that type of question, I will definitely pull up a chart and pull up the 20-year cup and handle. I can pull up, um, uh, you know, showing negative correlations. Um, I also can pull up ratios with showing, you know, what we're seeing with, um, you know, for example, the Buffett indicator, corporate equities to GDP. Uh, what this is, is a, it's a huge, um, a huge disconnect. We're seeing, again, the, the GDP, the growth of every nation is just getting slammed. I mean, GDP in the US hit just 2%. Um, but we're seeing bloated stock markets. This doesn't make any sense. Um, so <laughs> gold is let me let me just interject there with with this. Because um, love, love gold telegraph, right? Your client yeah. was just saying, Hey, do you guys know gold? Of course, yeah, I know this yeah. gold telegraph. Uh, central banks, the world are, are central banks around the world are stockpiling gold. Many in the West are mesmerized by overpriced JPEGs. I expect this trend to change. But to <laughs> your point, stocks surge on slowing economic growth, rampant inflation, and the fact that the wealthiest 10% of America 
Americans own a record 89% of all stocks. <laughs> The markets are broken. Come yeah, on. The yeah. markets are broken and you're the last to know. That's right. And this is part of the reason why smart money is, has left the, left the party, left the stock market, because this uh, is a major disruptor. Uh, confidence is already shot. And you don't want to be the last one on the, on, the, you know, on the ship here. The ship is already falling. And hopefully the Bank of Canada can, can uh, quell you know, this uh, rate of inflation by raising interest rates and how much. Um, you know, Paul and I were having a chat about the, the 80s, early 80s, 1980, when uh, mortgage rates were on 13%. Where did they end up into 22%? What's that going to look like in real estate if if we see rates going to 3 4 5%? People are going to be walking away from their homes, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, holding some physical silver at that time, 15, 14, 1,500 ounces of silver in 1980 bought you that house. This is your hedge. You can now pay off your mortgage. Don't walk away from your home. Pay it off. This is, this is what we want. Absolutely. The number one eight seven seven eight silver on the website, guildhallwealth.com. This is why I love working with you. It's just, it's shorthand. It's shorthand, you know? And, uh, like you know, Bruce in Lee. 19, in 1980, uh, the Dow, the, the Dow 30 traded at 850 points and gold hit $850. That's a one to one ratio. Um, in 1999, the ratio, I think it peaked at 44 to one. And in, in 2011, it got all the way down to 11 to 1. Sorry, 4 to 1. 4 wow. to 1 on wow. the Dow, mm -hmm. gold. And then right now it's trading at just under 20 to 1. Okay, we're nowhere near 1 to 1. Now, as well, in 1980, you could buy a house in Rosedale for 250 ounces of gold. Today, you would need thousands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if gold were to go to a one to one ratio on the Dow, which would be $35,000 gold, right. um, you could buy over a $6 million home. Yeah. Okay. So with, with the 250 ounces. So um, gold has a long way to go. If you compare gold to the debt, you compare gold uh, ratio wise to the debt, gold to the money, money supply, gold to, to housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gold to the Dow you realize it is dirt, dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. Now, one's cheap is someone else's expensive, and if you say, oh, $2,400 is expensive just on its own, what we're saying as a takeaway to this segment is contextualize that. That's right. Contextualize it to what? Right. $2,400 compared to a $1.3 million reno job? <laughs> right? Good point. Yeah. Uh, $2,300 to a $70,000 SUV mm -hmm. uh, compared to a $35,000 Dow compared to, I don't know, what's oil at? $80 a barrel, whatever it is. Like, what is, what are you comparing that to? And in those comparisons, where can gold potentially go from mm -hmm. here? How is it going to get there? I don't yeah. know if we've run out of time on this segment, but um, that's important. really the next, the, the next step here is how is it going to then how does gold break out of its shell where we are right now where the opportunity is there mm -hmm. it's cheap it's the the fact that gold has not has yet to take off mm -hmm. while all these other commodities are taking off exactly is a window of opportunity if you understand the markets if you understand that there's a finite amount of gold you can only add to the gold supply by like one and a half to two percent a year yeah and and now exactly. you're doing it in an envi now you're trying to mine gold in an environment where governments are cracking down on environmentalism mm -hmm. okay they're going to make it harder prices are rising for energy for labor for all of these things so mining companies are getting are getting hammered yeah there is a definitely a scramble over for ounces in the ground around the world uh, there's mergers and acquisitions picking up everywhere around the world and uh, partly because of this scramble for ounces to meet the macro demand. Uh, BlackRock's CEO Larry Fink admitted that the green energy transition is nearly certain to be inflationary. And he covered in last week's news, uh, platinum and silver are going to be squeezed with green energy requiring six times the amount of critical metals compared with their gasoline power counterparts. So there is a rush towards this green energy move, but uh, how are they gonna get this silver and platinum out of the ground when you're cutting 
you know, carbon emissions and all of these things and gas prices are going through, going through the roof, diesel prices, machinery. And where are the workers? Yeah. And, and again, like uh, Steve St. Angelo, we've had him on the show. His whole premise is about energy, understanding energy and understanding where it comes from and how we're going to use it. And this idea of avoiding reality again, of just switching on solar power as if it's just that easy, as if it doesn't take anything to produce these things, as if it doesn't any, it doesn't cost anything to, to implement these things. Right. What's the, how long are they going to last? Um, what's the actual um, return on energy investment in this regard? And do you just turn off the spigot for oil and you, you turn, look, look, anyone who's listening, look around your living room, look around your car. Guess what? Everything with plastic has fossil fuels in it, right? It's all petrol, uh, right? So petroleum products. So it's in everything. Mm -hmm. It's in your lipstick. It's in, you know, you can't just deny the st that you need this stuff to live in today's modern society. Right. And then when you look at silver and gold, specifically silver, you now, you really, now the rubber hits the road and you say, do we have actually enough to handle this supposed massive transition? Mm -hmm. In the next segment, let's talk about that and how the prices get out of this this doldrums and how the windows closing on the opportunity to do that. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. Uh, give us a call. Go to the website. Learn how to buy physical precious metals and also how to hold physical precious metals in a registered account. We'll be right back. It's the Real Money Show on Global News Radio six forty Toronto. Welcome back to the Real Money Show. The number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. Before Jerry, we talk about how gold gets out of the doldrums and what what is keeping it down and what's the, sort of the, the the linchpin. What's the trigger point that just cracks this wide open and the market goes sky high? I just wanted to talk about a quick article um, I I read. Um, it's from Jim Rickard's site on uh, the Daily Reckoning, and uh, this author was talking. You know, it's a, it, it was an article basically discussing how real growth is done from understanding real money, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else would be false growth if you don't really have a proper basis for things. And this was written by George Gilder. And one of the things that he mentioned in this article was talking about, um, obviously, the misunderstanding of a gold standard, but how the future could be saved by a gold standard. And it got me thinking about um, the, and he mentions in the in the 19th century, the money supply expanded rapidly, hugely, but it was all based on gold. So it was sort of allowed in a way, and it, it, it led to so much success mm -hmm. of the economies in, in that time. Now, what, what happened, there were a couple issues that sort of busted up the, the good times, which was there was like, I guess there were some massive gold and silver findings which dropped the price, mm -hmm. right? So that was something which is indicative of the 19th century and early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Like you think about the diamond market today, FCRF, Fancy Color Research Foundation, says the major mines will be gone mm -hmm. in a generation or two. That's it. You'll only have secondary market. Yeah. Same thing with gold and silver. There's mm -hmm. only a limited amount of physical gold and silver in the ground at these prices. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was one side of it. The other side of it was that eventually, I, I guess there was some recession or big, big collapse. And, and then the final point was that they brought in the Federal Reserve. But what was interesting at that time is they had all these different banks all around the country issuing their own currency. There was a gold standard, but they were issuing their own currency. Now, the problem with that was if you were a bank in San Francisco and you'd issue a currency and that currency ended up in New York, it was tough to track down is this like counterfeit money mm -hmm. is, it good? is it good you know the timing of things it was just a much bigger there, it wasn't like the global village it is today mm -hmm. well imagine and now here was the best part though these banks were all separate it wasn't based on a central planning central bank system so if a bank in, in nebraska went under because of bad financing or whatever it was it didn't create a daisy chain a contagion right. to all the other banks okay right yeah. it was it was singular it had no effect isolated, on the whole. Right? It was isolated. Now, imagine a world where there's a gold backing and every bank, no, no longer centralized, every bank is, is, um, has their own currency, has their own crypto, mm -hmm. right? The San Francisco um, ninth, ninth Bank mm -hmm. uh, digital coin. Yeah. 
all backed by gold, regulated through the government saying, if you want to issue a currency, it's got to be backed by this much gold, and you have to show that you have this much gold in mm -hmm. your bank, mm -hmm. right? Just like Poland's bought, or, or sorry, yeah, Poland's bought uh, 200 tons. I heard that uh, even Ireland bought a ton of gold recently. Yeah. How mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. Um, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So you could have 500 different currencies. It doesn't matter because they're all backed by gold. Mm -hmm. And you could spend whichever one you wanted or, or transferred, whichever. You, can, you can't say, the, you can't say the, the computers can't handle that. No. What do you think? Yeah. Good I mean, idea? It, bad idea? I think, it's a, I think it's a good idea. I think it's something that we will likely see in the future, in the near future perhaps. Uh, there seems to be um, a growing a contagion of risk coming out with the financial system, you know, talking about China in the past couple of weeks with Evergrande's issue, um, you, know, you know, that uh, oh, China's... Uh, can I tell you about that? Yes, please. So they paid a $250 million bond yeah. and China forced the CEO or, to pay it. <laughs> he, had to, he had to mortgage his house. <laughs> Right. Imagine that. So they got it done mm -hmm. for now. Yeah, but there's deadlines the coming can. up. There's deadlines, many, many other deadlines, and many, many other com companies. But there seems to be uh, that type of risk. The debt risk is going to pull the entire financial system. It is a contagion. In fact, the systemic crisis, which can uh, literally affect every single financial institution around the world. Um, so to have some sort of a, um, a resetting. Uh, recalibrator of, of gold and being a denominator all of all of these assets can not only safeguard the financial system, you will have some revaluations. It's either a revaluations downwards on those inflated prices and inflated um, you know dollars that you have in existence. If you need to back that up, you will need to revalue the gold price much, much higher, $35,000 gold. Um, so this is possible, and to have an audit actually done on the gold would be wise, and have it on the blockchain would be even better because then it's a public ledger. We know that this institution has enough gold in available, in avail available or silver available because you you may need to use a combination of both gold and silver, uh, a bimetal type of crypto. Um, but I do believe, in my personal opinion, that it's going to be sort of a national as opposed to bank. But it could be bank. Um, you know, we look at entities like JP Morgan, for example, who own about 700 million ounces of silver. And this is physical. So this is a this is a big, a big whipsaw. Silver is that that coil spring. And it's very exciting to be in silver, especially knowing that the shorts are, are being diminished. Uh, they're, they're wiping these shorts away. So silver, gold, back crypto, for sure, it, it's got to be backed by something or else it's just another fiat, uh, fiat system that, it, that it, I mean, history shows. Every fiat system just fails. One eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. Did you say audit? Because <laughs> when it comes to audits, um, I'm pretty confident that um, that the regulators in the states just take the major bank bullion banks as word for what they've got in the vaults. They don't actually audit what's there, and the paper market is a big part, or the synthetic supply, as we say in the industry, um, is a big part of why the price is down. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why it can't last much longer, right? There's a reason why every single day you're one step closer to this implosion on the on the banks, which we've seen before. Mm -hmm. But right. we're one step closer to that just breaking and the market having to reprice the physical gold and physical silver. We're going to go into detail. We'll unpack that in the next segment. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. If you'd like to acquire physical precious metals, you come to us, Guildhall Wealth. That's what we do. If you want to own your own directly owned, unencumbered physical precious metals, your own serial numbers, you know that you own it. If you want to pay the withholding tax, take delivery of it, you can have physical gold and silver in your registered account. That means that you can hedge, properly hedge, have negatively correlated assets in your portfolio today. All you have to do is give us a call, one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. We're talking about, right now, physical gold and silver are completely undervalued there someone's got a finger on the button it feels like and while everything else is going up there's this opportunity to buy physical gold and silver at what is basically 
cheap, cheap prices. How do we know that? Because there's a lack of physical supply in the market. Any bullion dealer will tell you that. There is a, a lack of physical product. We have, we have products that we won't put up on the site because we're concerned, Jerry, that if we put it up on the site, like let's say 10 ounce Royal Canadian Mint bars, that they're gonna sell out very, very quickly and then that's it. If someone wants to buy one or two, Forget it. Yeah, you know, and there's certainly kind of stories out there now. Um, we were, I think, you and I were talking about about um, a major dealer in the state saying, you know, if they got one one billionaire who decided to buy everything, would they would they cut off all of their current clients to to handle one one big client, right? Because mm -hmm. that's how easy it would be. It, the prices have become so utterly crazy cheap like nothing is trading mm -hmm. below its 1980 high that's right nothing yeah absolutely nothing and silver is so why is that how is that happening why is it that the paper price is low and the physical price won't break out and in, and instead what you end up with is kind of like you're squeezing something like squeezing one of these like gooey things you'd get at halloween and it's just like squirting out your 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 fist mm -hmm. Because there's not enough. Mm -hmm. And so the premiums have to rise because there's just not enough to service the amount of people out there. Mm -hmm. If there was enough supply, the price would drop. But yep. there's not enough, so the premiums have to rise. So there's a, what is going to reconcile the high premiums to the paper price? Well, we have to understand what the paper price is doing. They're using synthetic supply to pretend like there's enough product out there to push into the market to keep the prices low. This is the bullion banks. But this is all predicated on a thin, thin, micro thin layer of actual physical product. That's right. And every day that they try to keep the price down, they lose more of that product. That's right. So every day they become weakened by this. And all they're hoping, just like the Fed is hoping inflation will disappear. What they're hoping is that by keeping it low, people will not want it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was the whole premise the of the comics in the mm -hmm. first place. Get, make it volatile, make the price go down so people won't want to hoard it. Well, we know different, don't we, Jerry? What happens when the price drops? Mm -hmm. People buy it up and it's very temporary. That, yeah. that part, price drop is just a knee jerk reaction to something. Yeah. But the physical disappears and the premiums go up. Yeah, so what, what's your take on how long the paper market can keep this charade up before the market just absolutely breaks out and you have to gap up higher. Yeah, well, it, for the last 10 years, markets have preferred fiction to reality, but for how long is the major question? Um, look, we have we have many catalysts, and I wanted to bring this up because uh, Matthew Pippenberg from Gold Swiss, um, Egon's buddy, um, he came out with a list, and you know this reality is, is knocking on the door, Jeremy. And the fact of the matter is the LBMA has to has to fix its uh, balance sheets. They have to acquire the allocated by the by the end of the year. Right. So just to just to let everyone know, we've talked about the Basel III rules in the past and what it could potentially mean. But the Basel III rules only really took effect in North America, and it's still to take effect in England. So it's due to take effect by what the end of December, I guess. Mm -hmm. End of December. So I mean, we have a surreal financial world. World things don't make sense. Staggering debt levels, tanking economic growth, inflation, dying currencies, social division, and central bank inflated risk assets, Every and not to mention the, the amount of ounces that these central banks are now uh, are net buyers. They're, they're going long on physical gold. And you have entities like, uh, you know, uh, tech firms going long on gold yeah, bullion, Palantir. Uh, Palantir going long on gold. So, I mean, we're seeing today the inflation notch a 30-year 30, 30 high in the U.S., um, so inflation is is the major major kicker here, and there's, it's going to run out of control. Um, if we look at other gauges, for example, right now overall commodities are leading the way and ready to look for another big move to the upside. So silver, which is a part of this basket as well, has has decoupled, but for now, uh, it's it's very temporary. But this is a 20 25 year chart that I'm looking at here, and it's a very very brief disconnect between silver and the rest of the commodity spaces. So we're looking for another up push in the commodities sector, and silver will do a lot of catch up. Yeah, they're going to catch up very very quickly. We've seen it in this market. I mean, gold, uh, sorry, silver dropped down recently over the last uh, month and a half, and it already jumped up two dollars from from the from the bottom so things can happen in a hurry in this market now there's also something known as a crack up boom which means when people discover that 
their pasta next next week, next month is going to be a lot more expensive than it is today. They start running out and buying everything that they possibly can and emptying out their bank accounts to buy things that they know the prices are going to be much, much higher in a week or a month, mm -hmm. two weeks, and also for things that they think they're going to need. Yeah. So when everyone starts doing that, right, now it's going to be even more difficult because you're going to have that with the supply chain issues, mm -hmm. potentially, yeah. potentially. So we'll see how that plays out. But in the meantime, physical gold, physical silver are undervalued and it's the perfect opportunity to get out of that financial system and out of the way, mm -hmm. out of harm's way. And then what's the potential of the market? What is? What do you see as the potential in this market? And what do you think it's gonna look like too? You got a minute and a half. Uh, I see silver hitting uh, triple digits. Personally, I see gold hitting into the tens of thousands. Uh, this is a market that is very much undervalued and scarce. Uh, this is the fabric of why precious metals are money to us. Gold has always qualified it uh, as money for thousands of years. And when you know the markets start to digest reality, just for a moment, we'll have a percentage of the Canadian or U.S. population starting to acquire the physical gold and silver. Right now, we're very under, under invested in precious metals. Americans own 0.1% of their portfolios in physical bullion. That's very low. That's too low. It should be owning 5 to 15%. And if the, and if the entire U.S. or the Canadian population can do that, this market will tilt, it will explode, it will crack the physical markets, it will break the shorts. And this is probably part of the reason why we're seeing JP Morgan on both sides. They're doing one thing with the shorts, they're lessening that short position, but they have acquired and they're holding the physical because when this reset happens, and I believe it's going to reset with physical, uh, we're going to have a tremendous overnight, possibly a week long revaluation of the metals prices, and uh, we're going to be hedged and wealthy at the same time. The number 18778 Silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. Give us a call, go to the website, learn how to have physical precious metals in your portfolio. You can even go to Guildhall Press preciousmetals.com and pick up a few ounces here and there just to get your feet wet and better understand the market. Want to hold physical gold and silver in your registered account that's fully allocated, fully segregated. Ownership is assured. It's completely unencumbered. You are the sole owner. No counterparty risk. You give us a call. You you go to the website and you find out how it's done. Jerry, thank you so much. Thank Fantastic you. Uh, speaking with you again this week. And thank you to everyone for joining us this week on The Real Money Show on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Thank you